This time we will be diving into mechanics and the rules of the game, as having full knowledge of what you can do to influence your gameplay at all times is key. Sweet Spot is the part of an attack that has the greatest effect. It's usually the one that deals the most damage and knockback. Sour Spot would be the opposite. It's the weak hit of an attack which happens because you didn't space the move right or because you hit with the late part of the move. This isn't necessarily bad. Sometimes it's even better to hit with the Sour Spot because it can lead it to things that a Sweet Spot wouldn't lead to. Invincibility or intangibility frames are the period of time during which a character cannot be attacked or damaged. They're basically the same thing. The only tiny difference is that during intangibility, the character is completely unhittable and any attacks will pass through them. During invincibility, the hits will register, although there will be no damage or knockback. Find out if your character has any frames like this and put them to good use, as some characters have invincibility at certain areas during a move. Some characters gain super armor during some attacks. If you hit them while the super armor is active, they will take the damage but won't flinch. Super armor can always be countered by a simple grab, however. Heavy armor is a bit weaker than super armor and can only take a certain amount of damage. The damage threshold can be different depending on the move. Directional Influence, also known as DI, is a mechanic that allows you to alter the trajectory or direction you get hit in. A direction can be inputted at any point but then must be held when transitioning from hit lag to actually being launched. So basically, you have to DI before you get launched. There are two kinds of DI, Combo DI and Survival DI. Combo DI is used to escape combos by DIing away in most cases, which can make your disadvantage state much more manageable since you've created more distance between you and the opponent. Characters with bad recoveries don't have as much of a benefit DIing away, since they risk getting edge guarded in that case, meaning they have to DI in on some combos that'll lead them off stage, which means that they'll mostly fall into more combos or setups in general. Survival DI is obviously for surviving crucial killing moves. If you get launched straight upwards, you can only DI to the left or right. DIing up or down or diagonally does absolutely nothing. Once you start getting launched a bit more diagonally away from the opponent, you should DI away from the opponent. When you get launched horizontally, you can increase your knockback by holding up or decrease your knockback by holding down. This can be referred to as LSI. Usually, the most optimal way to DI is towards the stage. In some rare cases though, depending on the positioning and how the move launches you, holding towards the stage and diagonally up or down can let you survive longer. Generally, you always want to try to aim yourself for the very corners of the blast zone, as that's where you will be able to survive for longest. And to try surviving even better, you need to double jump towards the stage to try canceling your momentum. Using air dodge can actually kill you even sooner. But, of course, if you don't die, it will give you even better directional momentum towards the stage, while also keeping your double jump. The best options, however, are always your special moves that can cancel momentum, such as Villagers, Zero Suits, and Sheik's special move. You will also receive more knockback if you get hit while charging a smash attack, and if you get hit while crouching, your knockback will be decreased. Smash the eye influences the character's position as you are in hit lag. The main use of this technique is to get out of attacks with multiple hits. The most efficient way to smash the eye is by rubbing the control stick. This is a mechanic that makes a move weaker the more you hit an opponent with it. By weaker, I mean less knockback and damage. The game keeps track of every move you land and puts it on a hidden list with 9 spots. All of these 9 moves are now a tiny bit less powerful, and of course the more you spam a move, the weaker it'll get. Let's take the down smash as an example. When you've used up enough moves so that it gets taken off the list, then you've basically unstaled the move, making the down smash fresh again. Projectiles can also get stale although throwable items don't get stale. However, they do unstale other moves. A move will also stale if they hit a shield, projectile, or counters. If you die, all your moves will refresh. 
If you're having trouble finding a way to properly edge guard your opponent, then ledge jumping is another option you can go for. If you grab the ledge while the opponent is already holding it, it will force them off, which can lead to a punish if you grab the ledge immediately after they grab it. If you trump the opponent too late after they grab the ledge, they can avoid the punish. Once you get trumped, you can hold in to get on stage, hold out, or have no drift at all, all of which are punishable. You can prevent getting ledge trumped by buffering any ledge option, even release ledge by holding away just before you grab the ledge. If you re-grab the ledge without first touching the ground, you will grab the ledge a second time without invincibility, leaving you open for hard punishes. Although if you get trumped and get hit, you won't have to worry about touching the ground, since if you take damage, you will be able to re-grab the ledge a second time with invincibility. You can also do an instant ledge trump. This is performed by standing close to the edge, dash off stage, and as soon as you're about to leave the edge, do a half circle with the control stick as fast as you can and you will immediately grab the ledge. A good mind game is to run to the ledge, fake a trump, so that the opponent buffers an option, and then punish that option instead. Another way of edge guarding is punishing a so-called two-frame. It refers to the two frames of vulnerability that a character has from recovering. The first two frames of actually grabbing the ledge are punishable. If you manage to punish a two-frame, the opponent won't get his double jump back. There's also a rule that if you recover downwards from above, the two-frame will be non-existent. These types of recoveries can be done by pressing up B above the ledge, then tilting the control stick towards the ledge, and as soon as you're about to appear, release the control stick to grab the ledge. And if you tether recover, you won't have the two frames of vulnerability, but you will be completely vulnerable during the tether. Most recoveries will sweet spot the ledge, immediately grabbing the ledge when in range. You can prevent your character from grabbing the ledge by holding the control stick down as you recover. Then you can let go of the control stick at any time to grab the ledge. This can be a good counter to trumping, to knock the opponent away or even trump them instead, since you can grab the ledge right after them. It can also be a good counter against opponents that are trying to punish your two-frame. Although, be careful using this move too much because the opponent can easily adapt and punish you for doing it. Another rule is that you cannot grab the ledge after you've been hit for 54 frames. Resets, also known as locks or jab locks, is a technique that will only work if the opponent misses to tech. By resetting the opponent, you make them bounce again, and after the bounce, the opponent is forced to pick normal getup, getup attack, or roll. Something that should be noted is that you have a limited time to hit them as they hit the ground to reset them. If you are too late, the opponent will not be reset. Only some specific moves can reset, usually jabs or other sour spots. You can only reset two times before they get out of it. This can lead into a quick smash attack or a combo starter. Or you reset them twice and try to make a read on what option you think they'd go for. Usually, when you get sent under and towards the stage, you can tech towards the wall. However, once you start getting too much percentage, you won't be able to tech anymore if you get hit by a strong attack that launches you really quickly. This also applies for getting spiked downwards towards the stage. However, you won't be able to tech at much lower percentage than walls. And as I mentioned before, if you hold your control stick down, you will decrease your knockback and make it more likely that you'll tech at higher percents while holding up will increase your knockback, meaning you won't be able to tech much sooner than normal. Once you've started pressuring your opponents with aggressive aerials, you'll start conditioning a lot more shield. If you notice that your opponent is shielding and looking to block and punish an aerial out of shield, you can instead fastfall and grab as a mix-up. This is referred to as a tomahawk grab and is useful for all characters. These are some of the more advanced mechanics of Smash that you should study up on. As for the next episode, it'll be all about controls, advanced techniques, as well as I explained what buffering means and how it works exactly in Ultimate. Until then, make sure you watch the other videos I made on Ultimate. There's always something you can learn and discover in these videos. You could also contact me on Discord for a private session where I could teach you anything about the game and coach you to becoming the best player that you can be. Before you click off this video, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell to be notified on all the upcoming videos.